Okay, thank you very much. Welcome for joining us. Happy to okay. be here. Right, so we were just talking backstage, and this is an interesting point for the startups that are watching on the live stream and will be coming in. You presented at Travel Innovation Summit here, we think about seven or eight years ago. That is correct. So a perfect example of what can happen if you do well at the Travel Innovation Summit, you can now be back here talking about a successful business. We didn't win the competition, a little bit like American Idol. We presented but didn't win. Right. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that period after you presented here and the couple of years before you did, up until 20 months ago, would have been a very straightforward, you know, you're growing the business, you've got a straightforward kind of strategy, and then COVID happens. So... What has CLEAR been doing or trying to do over the last 18 to 20 months? So CLEAR has really been living our mission of making experiences safer and easier. Yep. And safety meant one thing after 9-11, which is how CLEAR was originally born, which is a registered traveler program using biometrics as your identity for a better experience through airport security. Obviously, we had really evolved that pre-COVID about expanding the travel ribbon beyond the airport security checkpoint to lounges, to check-in and beyond, but also to other areas like sports and entertainment and healthcare. And so it was this moment of we had been telling people, hey, identity is foundational. You should care who comes in. You should know them and something about them and make the experiences safer and most importantly, frictionless. And then all the businesses shut down and it was how do we bring people back? How do we make experiences safer and easier? So we created Health Pass, which is not only connecting you to your ID or your boarding pass, which we were doing in airports, or your ID and your credit card to buy a beer, but it was connecting you to another car. Yeah, changing the world, biometric beer. It's very important. Uh, but changing, uh, but connecting you to what we thought was going to be another card in your wallet, and that was your vaccine card. So we created Health Pass and also connected people to their test results to help people come back better. And that's been material, not only in travel, but beyond. Other than those things, I mean, over the last 18 months, how have you seen the market change? Despite the not much marketing going on in, as in terms of travel. Well, I think the market has changed on, on two fronts. One, partners, so that can be travel partners or sports teams or restaurants or enterprises have said, how do we get people back restore confidence and make their experience better and safer. And consumers have said, I just sat at home for 18 months in lockdown. I got everything I wanted at the push of a button, right? Every show on my TV, tacos on my couch. I want that experience as I re-enter the physical world. I expect a more frictionless experience. And so I think the exciting thing is when everyone's expectations change and I think lift, the ability to bring technology and partnerships, innovations about bringing people what they did not know they wanted. And I think frictionless experiences, either using face, fingerprint, eyes, voice, your phone, QR codes, has become very mainstream and the new customer expectation. Would that be then your biggest takeaway from the COVID era, as it were? Oh, there's so many takeaways. <laughs> um, I think the biggest takeaway is that to state the obvious, we live in a global connected world. That is the foundation actually of travel, which is why travel was so disproportionately hit and has taken so long to come back. It is actually travel. You can relocate your supply chain. Travel's about moving around. And so this view that this global connected world is only getting more connected and how do we ensure that we never shut down again and how do we create this frictionless omni-channel experience to serve our partners and help them serve their customers? Mm -hmm. Th those would be, I think, two of the main ones. Okay, so what would you say there, if, if there have been any kind of issues with usage and consumer and other things that have been going on, especially with around the health pass? Just in terms of, what do you say, what do you mean by issues? Well, I mean, what's been the feedback from ah, the use of it? Yeah. Uh, number one, what customers like is that they're already enrolled with a brand that they trust and the ability to use it in more places. CLEAR absolutely stands for trust. Privacy is in our DNA. It's been part of our brand and our culture since day one. And so that's been really important. Um, I think the other feedback is that we don't want to have to take out all these cards. And so the appreciation for, you know, sometimes when they say, can I see your ID and your vaccine card? And we go, oh no, in Health Pass, it's all in one. So this love of the all in one experience, this enroll once, use everywhere. 
But I think the main feedback is really appreciation, appreciation that it continues to evolve, appreciation that it can be multiple things. If you look at our partnership with Hawaii, we helped Hawaii reopen and not have to quarantine after you get there. And so the feedback is, thank you, and what else could we do with this? Right, okay. So what other types of travelers is Clear been seeing during this, kind of, if we can call this the rebound period that we're in now? We hear about digital nomads and which I think is a bit of an odd one, but uh, you know, leisure and business travelers. But how is that changing? So digital nomads is a big one. We actually talked about it yesterday on, on, a, on our earnings call, and actually it's now in Webster's Dictionary. So digital nomads is a real thing, and the way that that has shown up is by a changing of travel patterns. So days that used to be really busy, like a Tuesday used to be really busy. Monday, Sunday, Saturdays, Fridays, really busy. Tuesdays, strangely quiet. And so I think when you look at the hybrid work environment, a lot of people are showing up in the office Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and going somewhere else, which at some level is that business travel. If you're traveling and working from someplace else, but not visiting a, a customer, yeah. uh, right? But actually just working from someplace else, what kind of travel is that? We see a lot of families on, you know, traveling. What you've also seen is that with uh, younger people being vaccinated, the five to 12 year olds, mm -hmm. not only are families booking trips, but people are coming to see their families who they may not have before. Travel is a coiled spring. I think you are going to see travel come back bigger and faster than anybody is expecting. Okay, so we've been talking backstage about the experience I had coming over from, from Heathrow, and I was saying that, you know, ordinarily you would check in two and a half hours before, and actually it was a good job that we did because it was actually a three-hour process. And you said that that's just a ridiculous idea that, you know, that we have to set that amount of time aside. And I just wonder if you can speak to what some of the airport infrastructure issues that remain that you still, as an industry, that we need to get over and how you might be able to help. So at Clear, one of the key questions we ask, we're obsessively curious, is why? And I think when you start to deconstruct the travel experience from getting to the airport to through to then the places that you're going after, the why should be a big question. So for instance, uh, we created a home to gate app, a home to gate feature in our app, which tells you when to leave your house to get to the gate with 35 or you can change it 45 or 60 minutes to go because we've connected travel plus where your gate is, plus the walk from the clear lane, we know how long it takes to get through to the gate. Now you start to think about all the things that you could buy along the way. But in terms of the infrastructure issues, you've seen a lot of construction. Obviously, there's an infrastructure bill in the US. I think 25 billion of it is going to uh, aviation, and, and that should have an impact. But you look at ride share. You look at um, that, that's had a big impact. You're looking at the car rental companies rethink how they serve their customers in a more frictionless way. You're looking at innovation. We're working on biometric bag drop with partners, right? So to be able to drop, like there's another line to drop your bag. You should be able to drop your bag and keep on walking. Biometrics at the checkpoint, not only will biometrics be mainstream, and we think ubiquitous ultimately, but it's the experience that you drive off of that. The ability to go into the lounge and have what you want personalized and customized. Concessions, there's gonna be, a, look at all the concessions and, and Uber Eats and DoorDash and all that outside the airport. Shouldn't that be inside the airport? Why would you right. wait in line at 6 a.m. for your Starbucks? So I think the innovation and the partnerships are going to be coming to airports and you're seeing that. But it's great that you and I are sitting here talking about it, and we can say this is a great idea. But it's not as easy as that, is it? You, you need infrastructure bills passed by Congress, right. et cetera, et cetera. So, or, it's, yeah. it's a big deal. Yes. So it is a big deal, and it's clearly not as easy as I said. But if you talk to airport leaders in the US, they are thinking about it, they are talking about it, and they are acting on it. If you look at what's happening with so many of the travel companies, the ride share companies, the Airbnbs or bookings, or you know, um, they're all starting to put it together. So I think you have a lot more capital focused on it, both government capital and private sector capital. I think innovation, like what Clear is bringing, is allowing you to have both frictionless and safe. I mean, what we talked about before we came out here was in a post 9-11 environment, that which made it safer made it more challenging. And so you can put the two together now with technology. It's been 20 years since 9-11. We've just come through a global pandemic. There are no choices. You have to have public-private partnership. The infrastructure bill just passed, and a lot of companies like Clear are focused on it. Okay, so 
going back to the biometrics thing, which I think is really, really interesting. So how do you, Clear, and maybe other airlines, airports, kind of reassure travellers who might be, you know, dare I say, wary or nervous about biometrics, just as a concept, because, you know, a passport is a piece of paper, you know, is a card in their pocket, or it's the clear pass on their phone. That's one thing. But moving to something which is about their physical being almost yeah. is, is another leap forward. And there is some hesitation about that. And rightfully so. So first of all, my passport was stolen a few years ago, and it's equally nerve-wracking when yep. your passport is, you know, wherever. Uh, and why should you be stuck in a foreign country when you're trying to say, I am me, right? I can't get back. I'm, I, like, biometrics work. Uh, we are very focused on privacy done right. And that, again, has been a core theme of CLEAR since we started in 2010. And so I think that you can have companies, whether it be airline companies or CLEAR or other companies, really focused on privacy done right. We do not sell, share, or rent data. We secure the data. We encrypt the data. And so it's an interesting point. Faces are all over the internet. You can pull anybody's face down from the internet, right? And so actually doing it in a secure and trusted and transparent way, we think, and HealthPass was the start of this, giving people access and control of their information, having them always opt in and showing what they are sharing before they share it. We think there's so many ways, not only on the cybersecurity side, but on the privacy side, to really do it right, to drive that trust. And utilization then comes over time. Biometrics at airports is still another investment, though, isn't it? So how does, do airports need to be persuaded, do you think, to do the investment alongside all the other things that you right. were talking about? Uh, so Clear always says that it's zero capital and we will do the investment for you. And I think that that is really part of the public-private partnership. I agree with you. I think that uh, companies need to not be selling hardware and warranties, but you actually need to be selling services and helping partner with airports to drive revenues and returns. And so, again, in the world of win-win-win, we focus on driving revenues, creating better customer experiences so they travel more. There's a lot of surveys that say if you had a better experience, dare I say a frictional experience, you're more likely to travel. Right. And uh, ensuring safety as well. So, And the infrastructure piece from a biometric perspective is quite low. Right, okay. I mean, it's a common journalistic trope. You ask people when you're running out of questions, you say, what's, what's the pain point that still needs to be solved? And nine times out of 10, they always say, it's the airport experience, right? Um, Would you agree still? <laughs> is, there an, is there another thing that you still think needs to be solved? That Look, maybe I think you can the help airport with? experience is challenged for understandable reasons, yeah. right? Um, and I think that that is the opportunity that we see so ripe for improvement. But I would also argue that when you start to look at cruises, when you look at checking into a hotel, again, it's a smaller box than trying to get through an airport where not only is there security and airlines and bags and like you're trying to do a lot. It's a really hard job. It's the connecting all of these pieces, I think, that are really challenged. So you get through the airport to have to, you know, get on a shuttle to go get your, to wait in line, to go get your rental car, to show up at a hotel, to take out your driver's license and your credit card. Like, there's better ways to put the whole journey together. And so not only are we, have we been focused on the aviation piece or the airport piece, but really the whole travel journey. So, I mean, just if we can go back to the biometrics thing for a moment. I mean, what's interesting is that there's, there was some kind of momentum about it, around it. But then a few weeks ago, Facebook turns around and says, well, we're perhaps going to scale that back. It's something that's not a priority for us. And arguably, an organization like Facebook whether you like it or not, when it does something, it does something at scale, which can be the thing that pushes people into accepting something. So is that a kind of a, a hurdle that needs to be overcome again because Facebook has pulled out and it's more something that's common in people's minds? So I can only talk to the companies who have been really focused on privacy from day one and opt-in from day one. And so I don't know I don't work at Facebook, that people knew right. what was being shared and how it was being shared. So I really think it talks to privacy done right. And I think you're seeing so many companies now come out on the other side and talk about the things that they're doing and driving transparency. We have a very public privacy policy where we talk about what we do and how we do it. And in bold, it literally says, we will not sell, share, or rent your data. And so I think that um, Facebook needs to do what they need to do for their company 
and there's many companies like Clear who have been saying the same thing for over a decade about privacy, and it is this moment where privacy done right and ensuring the security and privacy of people's data is more important than ever, and those brands that stand for trust I think have uh, enormous opportunities to drive customer experiences and to bring partners better experiences as well. Okay, so, so much of this is based around collaboration and you need partnerships, whether you're an airline, an airport, the federal authority or the local authority that runs the airport and all those kind of things, the technology providers. There are often multiple standards running different things, all part of the different food chain. Let's just stick with aviation for a moment. Can we get all of those parties unified? And we're going back to utopia and things, but right. can they all kind of come together and just thrash it all out and agree on things? Or are we always going to be these disparate types of systems? So it does sound utopian. Passports, people have passports and there's some sort of standards for how passports are issued and the form factor they're in. I do think that you need standards. And I think that the aviation industry also the cruise industry, right, because of the global connected nature, um, has come out with standards for many parts of their business. And I do think that you need consistent standards, but probably not a consistent provider. And I think you are seeing that. Um, Clear has joined many groups that are focused on standards. So I do think you need a common understanding, if I'm entering your country, what that means and what security and safety look like. But you're not going to have one global provider. That's definitively too hard. <laughs> Indeed, but to provide a standard, should that be, for example, IATA's role? They provide standards for lots of other things, NDC. Do you think it should be them or should it be another organization or what? That I do not know. I mean, I think federal governments need to come together and decide some basic standards that work. Okay, so, you know, CLEAR started out as a, almost like a member service. It was a way to speed you through the airport and it was great and you could do all these things. Then obviously, as, as we started off this interview by talking that, you know, COVID-19 has given you a different dimension to the business. Talk to us a little bit about what else you might do as a member service, forgetting Health Pass if we can for a moment. What else, where can it go from here? So we really talk about you are always you, and Clear connects you to all the things that make you you, hence our ticker symbol Y-O-U. Uh, and so identity are, right, not only your driver's license, your credit card, your building access card, your employment, and your COVID status, your loyalty, your frequent flyer number. And so for different use cases, you would use different parts of your identity to create that frictionless experience. To get into your office building, it's I'm Karen, I'm employed by Clear, and uh, you know I'm allowed in the building, and I'm vaccinated. Those are the four pieces of my identity that I need to get into my office. To go to Hawaii, I'm Karen, I'm frequent flyer number, whatever, I have a boarding pass, and I'm vaccinated, so I don't need to be quarantined. That's what I need to get onto the plane there. So there's different pieces of your identity that you need to enable these frictionless experiences. And that's what we're about, and we're about giving people access and control of their information to use as they want to enable these experiences. And that you should only have to enroll once, not 100 times in 100 different services. So we started off by saying, seven or eight years ago, you were on the stage here, and look where you are now. If we were to ask you what kind of a company would Clear be in seven or eight years, what would you say? I would say Clear would be a global company. Today we are still in the US, and so that's something that we're very focused on. And that Clear will be a company enabling connected frictionless experiences in travel and far beyond. Okay, a follow on to that. Is it difficult to expand overseas to, for a company like Clear? Um, the answer is that every year it's been on our roadmap and then we get a little distracted. The past 20 months have been a different distraction. This is true. Um, I think the privacy standards we have here, we are GDPR compliant and things of that nature, so I think that's important. I'll tell you in a year or two. Okay. Uh, Karen Seidman-Becker from CLEAR, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much, everybody.